Hello everyone, my name is Robin Da Vinci and I come to you as a self-proclaimed money lady and I feel that the topics that I address are very important and the one I want to address right now is the inequities of money in a marriage or a partnership and the fact that people go into marriages and partnerships without discussing money thoroughly before they enter into the partnership and rarely anybody puts in anything in writing. And so I I'm here today not to squash romance, not to say that there isn't an excitement to fall in love or meet someone that you can partner with or go into business with, but I want to take it down a notch and tell you the practicality is talking about money. Every one of us has a relationship with money that is unique to us that someone else could or could not agree with. And what I find to be the biggest detriment in a partnership or a relationship is arguing over money. And it ruins relationships, it ruins businesses, it ruins partnerships because no one understood it to begin with. No one discussed it. We often put money over in this compartment in our lives and we bring it out when we need to use it as a weapon and we bring it out when we want to use use it to make a point, but we don't use it as a tool to becoming better partners. And when you go into a relationship, whether you're going to live with someone, go into business with someone or marry someone, one of the first conversations you need to have, and it's crucial to have, is how do you feel about money? How do you handle money? So here are the questions. Are you an impulse money spender or are you a planned money spender? If two people are getting together, that's the first question you need to know. Does someone give a knee jerk reaction to spending money and the other person hems and haws and, and agonizes over it? Or are you both the kind of people that look at it moderately, weigh the pros and cons and spend? Does someone come into the partnership with debt and the other one comes in without debt? How is that debt handled? Now, I don't want to cast aspersions against anyone, but we rarely want someone in our lives that has so many problems with money that we don't have, that we can't have a conversation about it without defensiveness, you can't make that work unless there's therapy and a lot of stuff that goes into it. So the first thing you have to know is how do you relate to money on your own? Are you a saver? Are you a spender? Are you a saver and a spender? Are you afraid to talk about money? Does money make you crazy? Do you understand the banking system? Do you understand how interest works? All those questions. So you go and you say, okay, what kind of money person am I? How much debt do I have? that I'm bringing into the relationship, whether a marriage or a partnership, business or roommates. After that, how do I approach bills? Do I approach bills as though they're a problem or do I embrace them and get them paid on time? Next, what is my credit score compared to your credit score? Is your credit score going to impact a business loan, a personal loan, a mortgage? So I know this sounds like it's not very romantic, but before you get married, before you get engaged, before you have children, sit down, compare credit scores. If one has an 820 and one has a 630, we're, we have a big disparaging problem because the 820 is gonna be pulled down by the 630 and interest rates are going to be higher and things are going to happen. Does either one of you have a bankruptcy? Have you ever been in a foreclosure? Have you ever not paid your rent and gotten in trouble? Have you ever been so late on a credit card that they've taken it away? When you're marrying someone, you're marrying their financial history. You need to know what that financial history is. So don't be doing that. Oh, I love you. Let's buy a house. Let's have children. Let's go to school. Let's go get an apartment together. Let's just be friends without having that conversation because one of the two partners could sabotage the other one just by not disclosing their financial background. Does one of you have student loans and the other one doesn't? That's important to know. Can we refinance the student loan together and get a better interest rate? How does that affect the equality of the relationship? When someone makes a heck of a lot more money than the other person, have you been to counseling to make sure the person with all the money doesn't lord it over you and make you uncomfortable? Does someone want to control you with their money? Is someone so needy that all they do is ask you for money? Those are important things to know in a relationship before you enter it. Now, they say money, sex, religion, politics, right? In that order. And it used to be sex, politics, religion, money. Now money has gone to the top. 
Money is now the biggest reason people don't get along. Families don't get along. Grandparents leave money. People can't decide how to spend it or to save it. People win the lottery. They lose their friends. They go bankrupt. People get in over their head because they can afford a house for 800000 but they want a house that's $1.5 million. They go ahead and scrimp and save to get in the one5 and then they can't handle the house. So if you two are not on the same page about how you want to live your life and how much debt you want, you can cannot get married. These conversations are the hardest conversations to have when you fall in love because you don't want to use your romantic, wonderful cloud you're living in and bring money up to the surface and have it rain on your parade. But it's going to. I guarantee you 100% money is going to rain on your parade. So do the following. Find out what kind of spender you are. What kind of person are with your money and don't make something up. Be realistic. Number two, find out your credit scores. How far apart are your credit scores? How far apart is your money history? Are you good at it? Are they good at it? And you weren't. That's another one. Who has debt and how much debt do they have? Can that debt be consolidated? Is the one partner without the debt willing to consolidate the debt with the other partner and make it doable and pay it off together? Are you on the same page about how you don't spend outside your zone? There's something so sad about when you spend money outside your zone. There's a comfort zone of money and a discomfort zone of money. And all of us need to tap into that inner bookkeeper to find out what zone we're in with the space we're in with our money. If you're very young and in love, it's likely you don't have too much of a money history. But if you're 35 and in love, you have a big history you're bringing to that relationship. And it's dishonest. And I'm going to say it out loud and most people don't want to hear it. It's dishonest to bring a bad money relationship into a relationship without telling the other person. That's really immoral and without integrity. You always tell the truth. This is my money situation. If we want to delay getting married for two years until I straighten out my money position, I totally respect that. If the other person says, here, I'm here to help you get your money situation in order so we can get married, and then you make a pact that you'll never get into the bad situation again. But I'm telling you, what kind of money spender are you? What's your credit score? How much debt do you have? What do you believe about spending? more than you have? What is your credit card activity? How do you handle credit cards? What is that attitude about them? How do you feel about eating out? All the things that come under money, as you discuss them all, you will find out more about that person than you thought. And you'll find more about that person that you need to know. So here it is, my I'm a self-proclaimed money lady telling you, know those things in advance. Do not bring surprises to a business partnership, a marriage partnership, live in partnership. You need to be honest. If one person doesn't pay bills and you're a bill payer and it falls to you, they need to contribute. All of this is about contribution, about inequities, making them equal. Somebody's going to make more money than the other. Talk about it. What does this person do in the relationship compared to the person that makes less money? The person that makes less money does not become a slave to the person that makes more money. There's none of that. What you have to do is find an equitable way to bring love and and sensitivity and equality to a relationship. A money inequity can bring a power struggle that you won't like. So follow my advice, pre-marriage, pre-engagement, pre-business relationship, find out all of those things, find them all out before you commit. Thank you for listening. It's Robin. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I have a lot more advice on these kind of simple things that I believe are the basic lines for having a happy, healthy relationship. So thanks a lot for listening.